When I started watching Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z for the first time, I was watching something I had never seen before. A young boy wanted to become stronger and defeat his opponents in an arduous battle that could lead to either his or the opponent's demise. Not everything was at stake and our protagonist needed to overcome this obstacle through his physical strength, through sheer willpower and the captivating personality that our main character had. That the impossible was indeed possible. It was truly something that made us fall in love with anime, but more specifically shonen anime since there was nothing like it at the time. And due to the success of Dragon Ball, this became more and more apparent. Animes like Naruto, Bleach and One Piece in the early 2000s were doing what Dragon Ball had done beforehand with unique approaches like making the characters more relatable or making the adventure more unique and long-lasting. But all of these anime rely heavily on the concept of physical strength. And with time, we've seen anime try to break the norm. One in particular is Hunter x Hunter, with a protagonist who is arguably the weakest in terms of physical strength, and thus him and others having to mainly use creative strategies to overcome each obstacle and opponent. A heavy focus on wits, rather than just physical strength. But due to the creator going on hiatus numerous times, it hasn't stayed in the forefront in the same way others have. Since then, we've gotten new shonen anime that still rely heavily on physical strength, the most recent and successful being My Hero Academia. But for some reason, I haven't had the same excitement I had when reading Hunter x Hunter for the first time. I really appreciate what My Hero Academia is doing, especially when it concerns its main character and his development, but at this point in time, it wasn't what I personally needed. In fact, most of the manga and anime I've been reading or watching these past few years have been more slice of life because there is a psychological and emotional approach that feels so refreshing. And it was also a genre I had yet to really discover properly. The tension that can exist in these stories without resorting to actual physical battles has been what I needed from anime. Just how much I relate to these characters and how these have impacted me in such a meaningful way. Am I saying that I don't like anime that rely heavily on physical strength? Not at all. As I mentioned before, I absolutely love some of these and I got into anime thanks to it. But I did need something different and for a while it seemed like I wasn't going to get that with shonen anime. Until now. With the rise of new shonen manga and anime, I couldn't help but come across the biggest one that everybody has been talking about. How it stays true to shonen at its core, with a much less focus on their physical attributes. How it was mixing both the psychological and emotional aspects of characters in a way that I had been wanting for quite some time. The tension that keeps on giving, and the emotions that stick with you. Let's talk about The Promised Neverland. It's also at this point that I should mention that I will be going into spoiler territory, mainly regarding on what happens in the anime. So if you haven't seen or read the first arc yet, I advise you to stop watching this video. You have been warned. The Promised Neverland tells the story of Emma, an 11 year old girl who has lived all her life at an orphanage. Life seemed pretty great for her and for everyone else until she finds out something that will change the course of everyone's life. And this moment is realized when she and one of her best friends, Norman, sees a six-year-old girl called Connie meet her demise. How moments before Emma saw her walking away smiling, believing she would finally find a family who would take care of her, only to find her later in such a horrifying manner. What was once reality is now a lie. Because the orphanage isn't really an orphanage. It's a farm that breeds human beings for demons to eat, more specifically their brains. And Mama, who's been taking care of these children for so long, is actually working alongside the demons. It's at this moment that Emma, Norman and their other best friend Ray do their best in devising a plan to escape the farm and sneak past Mama's clutches. And it's this that makes this shonen really refreshing to witness. Our characters have to resort to their intellect. Especially because Emma, Norman and Ray are by far the most gifted of the children in the farm. Both in physical attributes, but more importantly when it comes to their intelligence. And they will need to outwit Mama if they wish to survive. She is indeed the villain of this arc, but not one who they will fight physically. Instead, they must pretend that they are living their normal lives when in fact they are slowly figuring out ways to escape. 
understanding the surroundings of the farm, pretending to play tag with the other children when in reality they are training them both physically and mentally. All of this is to ensure the success of their escape when it comes to fruition. And it's great to witness this without resorting to any physical battles, but instead it being a battle of the minds. But this is meaningless if not for the ongoing tension throughout, knowing that if they make one mistake, everything is over, and these innocent children might die. It makes you really fear for them who have done nothing wrong, who believe they are being brought up to become a part of a foster family and live a happy life. A life of not being alone. What they end up realizing is that the family they so desperately want isn't who they will end up with because it doesn't exist, but rather the existing people around them. And through that, we also slowly start to get to know the characters more. The naivete and willpower of Emma, the goodwill and intellect of Norman, the cynicism and cunningness of Ray, the impulsive and helpful Don, the caring and thoughtful Gilda, and the ultimate being that is God Phil. And the more they have to work to figure out an escape plan, the more it brings them together. One of the great moments is when Don and Gilda realize that our three main characters haven't revealed to them the entire truth that they didn't know that the children were immediately sent to be eaten, that they didn't know that Connie had died. And seeing their reaction towards our protagonists made us connect a whole lot more with them. How they felt like they weren't trustworthy enough. How they felt like they weren't capable of helping in the way Emma, Norman and Ray needed how their self-confidence was in shambles after this realization, which makes Emma realize how wrong she was in not telling them the whole truth from the start, how they do need Don and Gilda if they wish to succeed, and thus we see these characters develop and bond even more. Their true family is this one, and they will have to trust each other if they want to escape together and not just these five characters, but all of them, which in turn creates an issue for Ray because he believes that the only way to save any of them is just themselves. In fact, having known the real truth of the farm all his life and pretending to be a mole for Mama, he never planned on escaping. All he wants is to save Emma and Norman and was going to sacrifice himself in order to fulfill his wish. The cynical character actually has deep affections for his best friends and he will do whatever it takes for this to happen. The problem is his two best friends will also do whatever it takes to succeed in what they want to do. Emma has been clear that she wants to save everyone. She wants the impossible. But achieving the impossible is also her biggest strength, and Norman, taking a liking for her, wants to help her in any way possible. He understands that Ray is right, but he also believes a great deal in Emma. He doesn't want to see her cry again like she did when they found out the truth. He wants her to be happy, and that's why it's so heartbreaking to watch him essentially sacrifice himself when the plan falls apart. What Ray wanted to do, Norman is the one who ends up doing it, and we see him slowly walking to what seems to be his demise, seeing Emma still try to save him but can't seem to do so, seeing Ray utterly broken emotionally, and seeing Norman walk through that door with a smile. Not a smile for himself, but for everybody else. How he still tries to keep the innocence and hope alive in the midst of what is about to happen to him. This is also one of the aspects I can't help but find incredibly charming about this manga and anime. How it mixes beautifully the horrifying notion that demons eat children's brains, but also how innocent it is at its core. And at its core is Emma. Her naivete, good heart, but especially willpower makes a character stand out from the rest, as is the case with so many protagonists in shonen manga and anime. She is Goku. She is Luffy. She is Gon. She is who we all want to be and inspires us to do the same. To believe more in ourselves, to believe in the impossible, and the impossible is what she achieves. After watching Norman walk through that door, all hope seemed lost for her. What Norman wanted seemed to have the opposite effect. Emma had accepted defeat, and so had everyone else, including Ray. The plan of escaping was no more, until something happened. She hadn't accepted defeat. 
Emma had been conducting a plan on her own. She had actually been working for two months with most of the children, and she knew that Ray was going to try and sacrifice himself, all thanks to a letter that Norman had left her. A letter with a plan, and the person reading it is the only one who can carry it out. She was going to save everyone. She wasn't going to let Ray sacrifice himself. She wasn't going to lose another best friend. To the point where she even cuts her ear off where the tracker is located so Mama couldn't find her. She outwit everyone and so did the children, all playing their part. And it's thanks to all of this that she is then able to succeed in escaping with Ray and all of the older children, planning to come back to the farm and saving the rest at a later date. Ray witnesses this and realizes what Emma is capable of. How her willpower and immovable strength was key in outwitting Mama and even himself. And in turn, we see his development on screen. How he becomes less cynical and more hopeful. How this will change him for what is to come in the future because that is the effect that Emma has. As is also shown when we realize Mama's acceptance of their escape, knowing what she went through in her life, having lost their friends, having no choice but to work with the demons, giving birth to a child that only she knows about, and realizing that these children, especially Emma, are the exception to the rule. And thus, we enter the world beyond the farm. It's the end of one of the most engaging arcs in shonen history and the promise of what is to come. I must say that when comparing both the manga and anime, the manga was able to evoke more of a reaction from me with the way the story is presented. How the characters have a loose and jagged style to them until a page is remarkably drawn to show the horrifying nature of what is actually happening. How this contrast I think depicts even better the juxtaposition of innocence and horror the manga conveys. And I also think it gives more time to some scenes to develop the characters more, especially in how it presents to us its emotional depth. How you really see the characters struggle in their facial reactions in these moments. But this isn't to say the anime isn't great either, especially when it comes to the use of lighting and colour. How the very small light sources and its colourfulness depict the small shining hope enveloped in a world of darkness. How the fictional camera moves slowly at times to convey even more the ongoing tension. How it executes the use of 3D modeling around these characters that gives emphasis to how big this world is and how small our characters are. And in both the manga and anime, there is one scene where it hit me the exact same. The moment where Emma tells Phil the truth and seeing his reaction. Because Phil is someone who is always smiling, but that smile wasn't what it seemed to be. Because he knew something was wrong, and when he finally finds out about the whole truth, he finally breaks. Crying in despair that his former friends are dead, knowing of the reality he and everyone else lives in. A moment that is beautifully shown through the panelling of the manga and highlighted extraordinarily through the use of colour, sound, music and voice acting in the anime. And there can be many layers to pinpoint, some more apparent than others, especially considering that the story starts with the realisation that humans are being farmed for eating. But there is one layer in particular that I want to focus on which I feel is the core aspect of the story, that this might be about how children eventually stop being children. That the world isn't the imaginary world we once thought it was. How the world can be terrifying once we get to know it more. How people are not as trustworthy as they seem to be. How we learn to survive and grow. And how we might start to lose the hopefulness we once had. How this is evident in what happens after the jailbreak arc. And how Emma is the one character to remind us of what we once were. That the impossible can be possible. Just like shonen manga and anime have taught us for so many years. Only not quite like this. I believe this to be a masterpiece in the making, but it might also not stand the test of time. Its strengths might become even stronger, or its flaws, which it does have at times, might become more and more apparent. The truth is, it's still too early to tell. Its impact might be momentary, but a momentary impact is still so much more than anything that came before it. Not because it's better, but because it's different. At least, different enough. It's what shonen needed, what anime needed, but most of all, what I needed. So for now, let's all enjoy this breath of fresh air. <laughs>